What's going on, peoples? Uh, we're back. Uh, this is Gerald Jarman. I'm your host, along with Andre Cooper, my main man right here, my brother from another mother. Um, so we're going to have another session here just to follow up on one of the topics that we felt was really crucial um, during this day and time. It's the topic of the racial um, injustices, um, you know, the tension, um, the different things that our society is facing today as it relates to the spirit of racism, um, hatred, uh, you name it. So again, it's, it's, it's so much tension. And you know, even when I walk places now, it's weird because you, you walk somewhere and you walk by a white person and you have a thought of, I wonder where they're at. Mm -hmm. I wonder what they think. Mm -hmm. And they probably thinking the same mm -hmm. thing. So it's, it's created such a, um, not a, it is fear, but it's, it's just a, a, um, not misunderstanding, but a, a question. Mm -hmm. You start to question yourself, question things. So anyway, so we want to dive back into this um, because we realize everybody is in the same boat now. You know, everybody is, is facing this, whether you're on this side or that side, no matter what political party you're in. Um, so we're going to hop right into it. Um, Andre, again, I'm glad to have Andre doing well in the community, father, married, and so forth. So Andre, I want to ask you a question. We'll start with this. What do you feel are, and, and obviously it's not one, but what do you think some solutions are to what we're facing today? Because we can talk about the issues and the mm -hmm. problems all mm -hmm. day. Um, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people get stuck in the issues, you mm -hmm. know, and, and they highlight, you see on Facebook, people steadily posting videos and this and mm -hmm. that. And, that, and that's okay to each their own. I don't like doing that. Mm -hmm. um, but let's, let's talk about some solutions. What can we do as a community, as an individual, mm -hmm. as an organization, as community activists? What are some things we could do, Andre, to help turn the tide, so to speak? I think embrace being uncomfortable, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And which, which I mean, like, this I mentioned before, like I lived, you know, half my life, you know, in the city mm -hmm. and half my life out of the city. And one of the awesome things about that is I've been able to get to know people from different backgrounds, different cultures, mm -hmm. know what they think, not just what's being fed to me through media mm -hmm. or fed to me through somebody else, like, experience but i got to experience things for myself mm -hmm. and and start to learn why people think the way that they think and so i think from people from all sides like really look to get uncomfortable and like be willing to have conversations and not always be ready to be offended mm -hmm. you know what i mean and mm -hmm. understand like you know like i grew up you know thinking one way i went to an all-white school my my last two years of high school mm -hmm. and I learned some things, you know what I mean? I faced some, I faced some, some harsh things, but also mm -hmm. got to understand people too, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? On the other side and why people thought that way, why people were doing what they were doing. Mm -hmm. um, you know what I mean? Seeing people's minds change because they got to experience something different. Mm -hmm. And so like one of the models that I have and that I have is like, you know, our, our words just show them different, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because no amount of yelling or even like policy is really going to change people's hearts. Yeah. You know, the only thing that's going to change someone's heart is that you get to show them, you show them differently than what they expect. Mm -hmm. So when you get in and allow yourself to be shown different, but also be willing to show other people different, like you can't expect people to respect you. I'm talking about just for myself. Mm -hmm. If I'm walking around, you know, with violence on my mind, mm -hmm. you know, if I'm walking around, you know, not doing the things that I'm supposed to do and being productive to society, I can't expect them to respect me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. like, I want to I want to show different and just like you know for people you know like for let's you know, say like white people for example like you know we can't expect you know black people to look at them differently if they're not willing to come into the come into the space and be able to show you know what like I'm not what you think I am mm -hmm. you know but if we're yelling our things over social media mm -hmm. where it's not the greatest <laughs> you know what i mean like right. communication piece right where you just only get to say your little one-liners like that's only hardening 
you know, what people's beliefs are, making them more concrete. So that's why I just get uncomfortable, mm -hmm. you know, and be willing to like engage with people that's different than you. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's, that's where the rubber meets the road because I think um, it's uncomfortable. It's, it's uncomfortable for a lot of people to have these type of conversations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because they've been, they've been in their own world. Um, they have their own experiences and this, and having these type of conversations might make them feel vulnerable, mm -hmm. you know. And, and when I say conversation, I'm talking between blacks and whites. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm blacks talk all the time, mm -hmm. but I think um, between blacks and whites, having that tough conversation, listening, um, experiences, but also sharing, hey, um, can we do this together? Mm -hmm. You know, what do you think about this, uh, Andre? Because there's a lot of there's a lot of people pushing blacks need to have their own school. Blacks should push to have their own this. There, there's a there's different movements to blacks have their own banks, you know. Um, so there's there's a there's a yeah. shift now. You can tell in the mindset of a lot of people that the answer is, and again, we're talking about solutions today. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a push to like Okay, the way we need to overcome this mm -hmm. is we just need to disassociate ourselves and have our own. And then that way, I guess, we'll have a better world. So what do you think of that? I was thinking, what is that going to do? That's segregation all over again. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But in a different way, but it's still like segregation. What is that going to help? Mm -hmm. So I asked the question is, what are my kids, what bank are my kids going to go to? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, what yeah, school yeah. are they going to go right, to? Right. You know what I mean? Like, so like, there's, no, nah, man, there's, it's, it's about coming together and understanding the more that we try to divide ourselves more, mm -hmm. the less unity is going to be. Mm -hmm. Because it's just, it's almost like, you know, like different high schools, like, you know, have rivalries, like, mm -hmm. you know, this school against this school. That's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, there's going to be a race for power and it's going to be like, it's going to make, it's going to make things worse. Yeah. You know, in the relations and I'm looking for like, look, I look at it as, you know, God calls us to be peacemakers. Like, God entered into our world. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? God, I mean, I look at like as a, as a believer. This is you know my, my belief system as a Christian. Mm -hmm. I see a God who saw trouble and said, "I'm gonna enter in and make peace." Mm -hmm. I see a God who's like, "I see my enemy, and I'm gonna forgive him and I'm gonna love him anyway." Mm -hmm. And so, if we're just like, I see somebody who's perceived to be my enemy, and I'm just gonna just hold totally distance. So, like, what's gonna get better? Yeah. Change only really happens when we can come together, when you can enter into it and go through some hard stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's where change happens. But if we want to take the, the easy route of like, well, I'm just not going to deal with it, that never works. No. Yeah, I think you, you, had a, you made a good point. It's actually going backwards. Mm -hmm. if, that, if we were to follow that model, yeah. um, it's, it's actually going backwards and not moving forward. Right. Um, and the thing is, you know, they talk about history. We need to talk about history now, and mm -hmm. we're educated on history. But a lot of our history is still prevalent today. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of the struggles from the mm -hmm. 50s and 60s, mm -hmm. you know, it's still here. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the, the great, you know, Martin, Martin Luther King and his speech and mm -hmm. um, the Declaration of Independence, all men are created equal. Um, and we need to talk about the horrors. Yeah, like, yeah. we do need to talk about, and I think that's what one of the things I think about America is that. It's, it's been put on this pedestal as this like perfect, mm -hmm. awesome nation. Mm -hmm. And so we can't talk about its dirty little secrets mm -hmm. in, in the public square, right? It's almost right. like when people become Christians, it's like, I'm gonna put myself up here. I can't talk about my sins. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Like, yeah, because, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's how America is. Like mm -hmm. when like people who are like ultra patriotic, it's like, it's almost like talking about your dirty little sins and you mm -hmm. can't do it. But no, we need to talk about it. Yeah. Like, you know, this happened, mm -hmm. but there's change. Like the most powerful story of a Christian testimony is I was this way, I met Jesus, and then I changed. Yep. Right? Yep. And this is why America can have that come to Jesus moment where mm -hmm. we was like, you know, this these things happen. Mm -hmm. And educate everybody on what happened. Let's let's talk about it. But then these things happen and now there's change and we're mm -hmm. better. I think that's kind of where we need to be at. Let's talk about it. Let's be let's be real about it. Let's talk about it in the schools, at all schools, because it's taught differently in different schools. Yes. When I went to Harrisburg, it was taught one way on the pendulum. Mm -hmm. When I went to Palmyra, it's taught the other way in the pendulum. Yeah. Right? Where the truth is in the middle. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Let's mm -hmm. let's really deal with really 
what happened, and let's deal with it and move on. Right, right, man. That was a lot to unpack there. I, I, I mean, when you when you think about it, um, and I, as a Christian young man myself, one of the things I think about, and I thought about this the other day. You know, in the Bible, I studied the Bible, and you know, I don't study just for here, but you mm -hmm. know, from my heart. But in heaven, there there's there isn't going to be a room for Asians. Mm -mm. You know, with that section, that's going to be no. the whites. And that section over there is going to be Hispanics and the blacks. In heaven, it's, it's going to be one. Yeah, it's one, one people. One people. One people. You know, one nation. You mm -hmm. know, and I was thinking about that, like, we're not going to be broken up into classes in heaven. Mm -hmm. um, based on what, what I've understood but, from the Bible. No, not, it's know. not going to be broken up by culture or money. Mm -hmm or any of those kinds of things no. that we separate ourselves from. That's no. that's the heart of sinful man that brings these distinctions and separates. Mm -hmm. God's like, look, if there's one thing that makes you in common and that's the blood of Jesus, there's mm -hmm. one thing, mm -hmm. that's it. And so I think that's kind of where we gotta like take take notes of that and think through that. Right? And look, we're the human race. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we might be different in certain ways, but we're the human race is one thing that unites us. You know, we are all created in the image of God. Mm -hmm. And so my prayer, as we wrap up here today, my prayer is that um, we come against the spirit of division, mm -hmm. you know, the spirit of racism, division, those things come to divide, mm -hmm. um, you know, to separate. You know, you think about there's different denominations, mm -hmm. there's there's different the things to divide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always like, so my prayer is that, and our prayer is that, you know, we would, become one. Actually, before Jesus left, his mm -hmm. prayer was, right. Father, I pray that they become one. Mm -hmm. Even like you and I are one. Are one. Yeah. Unity. Mm -hmm. But again, as I said last week, or I said before, unity is not conformity. Mm -hmm. Unity is celebrating diversity. Mm -hmm. And so we have to get to the place where we can celebrate each other's culture and differences and all that kind of stuff. And I believe that then we're on our way to implementing um, solutions that can bring change mm -hmm. you know so um thank you guys again uh for tuning in it's been our pleasure to share mm -hmm. always great to have my man with me um hopefully you guys learned something um feel free to, to leave a comment um if this bless you um, we're going to keep moving forward and highlighting certain things in the communities in our nation at large right don't forget to follow my page uh, German International, and also check out my books. All right, you guys take care. Always remember, somebody is waiting and depending on you. See you next time. Perfect.